Welcome back with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Denise Knorr, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Elk Grove Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So you are a first grade teacher at Florin Elementary School. Sixth. Sixth grade teacher. I'm, I'm, you know what? I can't read my own writing. <laughs> sixth grade teacher. Yes. So let's talk about sixth grade and, and why that is such a, a critical year and what you're um, preparing the students for, for their future. Well, it is my favorite grade. I've done it for 17 years now. Um, they just um, amaze me. They are uh, just starting their independence. Um, they have a sense of humor. They are just explorers. They, they just want to learn. And they're also just not that grumpy because they haven't fully hit puberty so <laughs> they're still a lot of fun and I just I just really love the curriculum in sixth grade and they still just love to participate which is very much my style of teaching is um, um, my principal hates when I say that I don't really feel like a teacher I feel more like an educational guide um, because I want to present curriculum um, and then I want them to be actively debating, participating. I want their full engagement. And many times at the end of a lesson, um, I decide how successful that lesson was by their involvement, their participation. Um, I feel that that learning is way more meaningful than me just uh, lecturing or me just teaching them being actually involved in the learning process and they then they retain it as well and sixth graders are able to do that um, it's just a great grade and it just fits for my style of teaching so as an educational guide you know you're giving the students a lot of ownership oh yes in their education correct yes and and their self-esteem just just goes flying and and then because i build this personal connection with these kids and they look at me sometimes like I absolutely know I cannot do this but because that connection has been made and I tell them yes you can they are at least at the beginning willing to try and then they see their successes by the end they don't even doubt themselves they just are like okay she says I can do this and let's do it and um, they, they all grow um, at least um, an entire academic um, year, some more. Um, and with the informal and formal assessments, um, I have that data. And um, I also do not like worksheets and I do not like busy work. I, I teach with project-based learning mm -hmm. um, activities that most of them I've created and it's so easy to with these projects get these kids engaged because what child doesn't like to create a, a project and within these projects um, I can modify for the kids that need um, some supports and I can also um, extend for the kids that need um, a boost and a challenge. Can you more fully explain project-based learning for those who don't know what that means? Yes, absolutely. So at the end, every single kid in my class will have on our best of, where their name tag is, their project. And the, f the covers of the project always look the same. But if you go to the wall and you open it up, so let's say on the left uh, trifold of the project is a poem. Well, Maybe my kids that need an extension, the poem would be a narrative poem. Maybe my kids that um, are ELs and maybe have a language issue, I might give them an acrostic poem. Or maybe my standard-based kids, I would have them do a haiku. Um, so I'm able then to make sure that each of my kids is getting exactly what they need. Um, that they can be successful and continue to grow at their level. Um, as far as writing, the same thing goes. On a criteria sheet, the piece of writing, I might ask for my, um, my kids that are really academically strong to do a five paragraph deductive essay. 
Um, my standard base kids might be doing informational paragraphs. And then my, my struggling writers, I might actually be providing them sentence frames where I actually give them the starts of sentences or their transitions to the next line or paragraph. But nobody in the class knows that I'm doing this except me and if I have an aid in well, no, my class. No, you just told everyone what you're, you're seeking. So. <laughs> well, it, hey, it's, <laughs> it works, but, but the kids mm -hmm. aren't seeing what the others, everybody ends with a project. And on the, on the board, they all look the same. And the only time it looks different is if you go in, but it's, it's what every kid needs. So you're preparing these students really for middle school. And middle school is really crucial because students who struggle in middle school a lot of them don't get through high school. Mm, absolutely. So what are some of the foundational things that you really have to work on to, to get those students ready for the next step? Well, I have to get them, first of all, to be advocates for themselves. Um, when, when I have my students for all subjects, I have them for six hours. I can tell. I have that relationship. I have them all day. I can see that they're struggling or there's a problem. In middle school, they rotate and they have bigger classes and sometimes there's 40 students in a class. And if I do not get them to be willing to advocate and ask for help, um, they, they will fall behind. Um, the middle school and high school uh, teachers, they do not have that luxury that I do having students all day. And it is my number one thing for preparation is getting them independent. Um, it's, it's, I call it the great uh, um, program. It's, it's actually G, two R's, but it's the gradual release of responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, I bring them in and I give them the tools so that they can be released to be independent and self-advocating. And that's the number one thing for getting them ready for uh, middle school because they have to be able to communicate when they need help or there's a problem. And they have to have confidence because confidence absolutely. is crucial in education. Right, absolutely, so, absolutely. So what made you become a teacher? Why, what happened? How'd you um, get here? I, I, at my own kindergarten graduation, uh, proclaimed that I was going to be a teacher <laughs> and have 10 children. I did not have 10 children. Well, half of that um, was right then. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I never thought about doing anything else. I love my job. I, I am honored to do my job. I do believe that I am successful at my job because I think that kids love to learn from a teacher who loves to teach. And, and I love to teach. And if I ever do not love doing it, I will leave because um, every school year is precious, and um, I just don't believe that students can afford having a bad year. We, we have to get um, these kids ready, and every year counts, and, and we have to do our best by every student every year. So uh, in sixth grade, you have students kind of, they're striving for independence, yet they really need their families. Oh yes. And so, how do you how do you kind of balance that when you really want to get some family involvement in your classroom, yet you've got the student who says, you know, mom and dad stay home. How do you how do you change that? Well, I absolutely believe in the triad. You know, the school, the, the child, and the home. Um, I cannot do it without uh, the children's parents. They are the experts of my students and, and I need their information and I tell them that. They are valuable to me and I honor them. Um, I reach out with uh, phone calls and postcards before school even starts. I welcome them all to back to school night and share who I am and, and I just proclaim how much I need them. Um, I also am the service learning coordinator for my school, so with doing service projects and the parents come and support those projects, um, it's a lot of opportunity to when you're digging in the garden or you're doing the canned food drive um, and, and these activities to just start visiting with parents and you know 
when you've pulled weeds with a mom or a dad, mm -hmm. and then the next week you have to call them and say, hey, I need a little bit of help, you know, in the classroom. They absolutely will work with you because they know that you are real and that you really care for their kid. And, and here you just were pulling weeds together on your weekend. And mm -hmm. they will help you because you've built that relationship. Yeah. And it's so crucial. And um, I, I feel that uh, forming the bond um, with the, the community is, is absolutely number one. And I'm also the student council advisor, and so many of the kids, when they're on my council, their parents come to participate in, in their, their programs that we do um, for our leadership. Oh. So that's another outlet I have to have connections with their families. Well, obviously, the connections have worked because you're a teacher of the year <laughs> for the Elk Grove Unified School District. We've been speaking with uh, Denise Knorr. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.